Hello and welcome to Community Connections and RCTV's election coverage. I'm Sherry Vandenacker, your host, and today we're here with Erin Gaffin, who is a candidate for re-election for school committee. Welcome, Erin. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Sherry. I appreciate it. <laughs> so you're pretty well known, but for people who haven't met you yet, might be new to town and to the school committee, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Okay, uh, my husband Eric and I have lived in Reading mm -hmm. for 17 years. Uh, we have three boys who are 16, 14, and 10. Uh, we're both very active volunteers in the community. So in addition to being on the school committee the past three years, I've been a town meeting member for a number of years. I'm heavily involved in the schools. Um, and I'm also a realtor in the community. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much, um, around and about. Thanks a lot. Um, so you just completed your first three-year term. Mm -hmm. And why are you running again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I thought um, so. <laughs> um, you know, I say this a lot. I, I was elected at a very uh, weird time. Mm -hmm. um, so the last election was in March mm -hmm. because of the primary. And I was sworn in on a Tuesday, and we closed schools on Friday. Um, so, you know, a lot of what I thought I was running to do kind of got tossed out the window uh, in that first year as we had to navigate the pandemic, which was constantly, um, you know, new hurdles over and over. Um, but I really feel good about the direction that the district is going in. I'm very much enjoying the administration. I think I work well with the committee. and. Um, you know, I kind of feel like I'm finally getting comfortable and, and getting in a groove. So um, I'm excited to be a part of the next three years. What have some of your accomplishments been in your first term? Gosh, we've done a lot in the last three years in the district. Mm -hmm. um, so two years ago, we hired a new superintendent. Um, I was part of that, that screening committee. Um, I was so excited when we found <laughs> Dr. Milicheski, and I, I remain I remain so happy uh, with, with how he's doing and what he's brought to the district. Um, we've also had a lot of turnover in other administrative positions, principals, um, and I think there was a lot of concern and worry about how much turnover we were experiencing, but um, I feel so good about who we have in place and how everyone is working together, the direction things are going in. Um, we are in the early stages of a potential new school building project. Um, we've expanded the METCO program, which is something I'm really proud of. We added about 40 new students. Mm -hmm. We also added six METCO coordinators slash school adjustment wow. counselors at the schools, um, all um, people of color, and we have struggled to diversify our staff. Mm -hmm. so, that was a positive step in the right direction. Uh, we still need to do more there. Um, a lot of curriculum changes too. So new math curriculum at the elementary school, new reading curriculum at the elementary school, um, which got a lot of attention mm -hmm. because it was, it was so desperately needed. So a lot of new programs at the high school too. So um, you, know, you have a high schooler, you probably have heard a little bit about some of this, but next year we're launching Innovation Pathways, which is going to be exciting opportunities for our freshmen and sophomores to pursue a, a particular um, interest or, or potential mm -hmm, career mm -hmm. path for them. Um, we're also expanding the dual enrollment with Middlesex Community College, That's which good. is just a really awesome opportunity for our students. So. Mm -hmm. um, just a, a lot of good stuff happening. That's just some of it, but yeah. Thanks for that summary, that is yeah. exciting. Yeah. Right. So um, what is the workload like for a school committee member, and what's it like to work with the rest of the committee? So that's a great question, and I, uh, I get asked that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, people are somewhat familiar with the fact that we have meetings, don't always know how often we meet, um, but there's so much that happens behind the scenes, and in addition to our public meetings. So um, our regular meeting schedule is roughly every two weeks mm -hmm. um, on Thursday nights. Before a meeting, we receive a meeting packet, so there's time spent preparing for the meeting and what's gonna be coming up. Um, I usually also check in with the superintendent before every meeting. Um, outside of that, 
I'm on several um, subcommittees mm -hmm. or I'm a liaison in several mm -hmm. places. So I'm the school committee liaison to the, the CPAC committee, um, which is the Special Education Parents Advisory Council. I'm the school committee liaison to PAIR, which is Partners and Allies for Inclusive Reading. Um, so those both meet monthly. Mm -hmm. um, school committee, uh, sorry, CPAC also holds a monthly like check-in with mm -hmm. the board and, and with um, the director of special education and the superintendent for student services, uh, assistant superintendent for student services. Um, I'm also on the policy subcommittee, um, which is just uh, three school committee members trying to stay on top of <laughs> many, many policy changes yes. in the yes. state. Um, I am on the professional development uh, committee with the assistant superintendent, Dr. Sarah Hardy, and several teachers in the district. And I recently volunteered to join um, a new committee, the, the Family Engagement Committee, looking at how to increase and improve family engagement in town. So those are some of the other things um, that you know are a structured way I spend my time. Um, you know, last week we were invited to come read at some of the elementary schools as part of Read Across America. So I got to read at two of the schools. Um, I highly recommend reading to kindergartners because they are adorable. <laughs> they all they all wanted to tell me about their loose teeth and mm -hmm. give me hugs. And oh. I said, I'm going to start every Friday this <laughs> way. This is really nice. Um, yeah, so there are other opportunities like that that come up as a, as a school committee member that, you know, I try to take advantage of as well. You know, we try to get into the schools when we can. And it's, yeah. it's such a paradox that we spend so much time meeting with adults when we do mm -hmm. education work when it, and how refreshing it is and um, energizing it is to meet with the kids. Oh, so. absolutely. I'm glad you get yeah. some chances to And I that. love to get into the schools and mm -hmm. just see what's happening. I've been at all the different levels, not quite all the different schools mm -hmm. yet, but um, it's just awesome to, mm -hmm. you know, have all these programs and curriculum that we talk about and then to get to see it in action right. is really exciting. So, um, Aaron, one of the major responsibilities of the school committee is evaluating the superintendent. Mm -hmm. So, as you have gone through that process and as you're looking ahead, setting goals for the district and all, what's coming down the pike and what are you excited about? I'm excited about a lot. <laughs> um, so, that's, that's a good question. As far as evaluating the superintendent, obviously we have a new superintendent. Mm, um, right. He's not just new to Reading, but he was a first time superintendent um, coming to us just under two years ago. Um, right. So it feels very important to give him critical feedback so right. that he can grow in, in his position. And thankfully, he's someone who's incredibly eager and open to feedback. Um, and I'm constantly giving him feedback throughout all our conversations and meetings. Um, the superintendent actually meets with each of us one-on-one -on -one um, roughly every two weeks. So that's wow. an opportunity where I can bring anything that's on my mind um, and, and talk it through with him. And he might flag some things for me that are going on in the mm -hmm. district and sort of get my input on it. So I constantly feel that I have the opportunity to share whether it's my personal opinion mm -hmm. or concerns that have been brought to me by mm -hmm. other members of the community, other parents I know. So that's nice to have that ongoing. Um, we also established that in addition to doing the summative evaluation at the end of the year, mm -hmm. we also have now started doing a formative evaluation about mid-year. So oh, sometimes good. the superintendent's goals are only a couple months in at that point, mm -hmm. but it's still an opportunity to stop and reflect on, on how the goals are progressing, um, and we provide written feedback for that. Um, we're a part of, you know, providing feedback in the formation of the goals and the formation of the district improvement plan. Um, for the past two years, we've held a big retreat in August with um, central office principals, um, district leadership, um, RTA representatives, and the school committee. And a big focus of that is is what are the goals for the year to move the district forward and to move the district forward together. So. I feel that there's a lot of collaboration. Mm -hmm. I feel as a school committee that I have a voice in the process. Um, and I have a superintendent I'm really excited to back and support. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of good conversations happening and I'm excited about where the district is going. 
That's good. Well, you were an educator. I am an educator. So formative feedback is um, the most exciting and meaningful feedback, really. So yeah. it's exciting yeah. to have somebody who wants that and yeah, to have mechanisms absolutely. to provide it. So um, Killam, well, many of us have heard about the Killam School. It's reached the end of its functional life mm -hmm. um, in many ways. And we have received approval from the MSBA, uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority, is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. For a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. So what's coming down the line next or what should we be looking out for in the community about that project? Yeah, so I'm glad mm -hmm. you asked about that because that's going to be a really big focus of the next yeah. few years for mm -hmm. the school committee. Um, so not only are we dealing with uh, an outdated school building mm -hmm. that has many safety concerns at this point, but we have a lot of space issues in the district. Mm -hmm. We still have modular classrooms at four elementary schools, and while they've worked great, um, they have air conditioning, <laughs> you know, they have some nice bonuses. Um, they're not a long-term solution right. for, for educating our students. So the um, feasibility study means that we will hire a, a project manager. We will examine the, the Killam site. So they need to look at um, traffic. They need to look at um, the actual soil and ground mm -hmm. and just really try and figure out are there going to be any issues with a physical building project happening on the property so that we know everything up front. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, a design will come out of this mm -hmm. stage. Um, so again, we need to look at not just meeting the needs of Killam, but I ideally addressing some of our space and program programmatic mm -hmm. issues in the district. Um, and eventually we will have to agree upon a design and we will have a cost estimate for building that design. Mm -hmm. um, and then it will go to the voters to mm -hmm. decide if they're willing to pay additional taxes to, to fund a new school building in town. Right. Yeah, I think that's an, you made some really important points there. Since we have five elementary schools, when you um, have the opportunity to replace one of the buildings, you can improve operations at all of them in Absolutely. Many ways. That's right. my hope with mm -hmm. this project. Yeah. Erin, mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for coming today. And everybody, please remember to go vote on April 4th. Thanks, Erin. Thank you, Sherry. Mm -hmm.